Hello everyone and welcome again to Ferris Sports Update. I'm your host Rob Bentley and thanks for tuning in. On today's show, plenty of Bulldog hockey coverage as we get ready for the NCAA tournament and we'll check in with the Ferris State track and field team. We'll start with Ferris State Hockey and head coach Bob Daniels. And coach, uh, welcome back to the show. Good to be here, Rob. Thank you. I know a hectic and busy weekend, but uh, congratulations on earning an NCAA tournament appearance, a uh, second one here in the last three years for the Bulldogs. Thanks, Rob. But yeah, it's, it's been uh, uh, hectic for about a month and a half now, it seems like, but in a great hectic way, you know, uh, and what I mean by that is there's been years where we've been done by this time of the year, and there's a lot of teams that are sitting on the sidelines, so this is the kind of biz you, you welcome and enjoy. This past weekend at Van Andel Arena, WCHA uh, Championship uh, down in Grand Rapids, and a, a great showing of support from uh, from the Bulldog fans this past weekend. Wow, did we ever have a great crowds, and, and, and realistically, uh, it, it made the tournament. Um, you know, it, it gave it the atmosphere you want to have at a championship event. Um, we were fortunate to play both Friday, Saturday nights. Our, our fans came out in large, large numbers, and, and we should because of the proximity in the, the season we're having, and it just shows you the Bulldog following is healthy and strong, but give a lot of credit to our fans for coming, giving us a, a home rink advantage, if you will. And then also, uh, you know, I, I think uh, congratulations and a job well done to our athletic department, Perk Weisenberger, yourself, Dom Henning, John Coles, Linda Bomar, uh, Craig Wada, uh, uh, Haley Patterson, that entire group of people, uh, countless hours they've worked to make sure people got the tickets and, and the customer service they wanted. And, and uh, I can't thank everyone enough for making the event such a special uh, weekend, not only for us, but for the visiting teams as well. You started off on Friday night, second semifinal against Alaska Anchorage and a team uh, that you had played a couple times uh, here earlier on in February and uh, a great team uh, that you took on on Friday night. Boy, it, was, it really was a good team and, and they are a good team. And, and uh, you'll see here, we, we jump out to a, a two nothing lead, but realistically, Rob, we were not playing well. I just, you know, uh, the last few weeks, we've, we've spent a lot of emotion. Uh, when you look back two weeks ago, winning the, the WCHA regular season title in the last weekend of the year, last game of the year, and then, uh, you know, the, the next weekend to get to Van Andel, we had to win the first round of playoffs. We go to a double overtime against Bemidji. And, you know, you, you don't want to make excuses, but uh, from a physical standpoint, we were fine, although we had battled a little bit of a flu bug during the course of the week. Um, from an emotional standpoint, maybe, you know, we're running on empty a little bit. We ended up falling behind 4-2. And, and uh, I give our guys a ton of credit for, for reaching uh, back and uh, reaching deep and coming out with the victory. Here in the second period, Alaska Anchorage with a big period to take the lead. And as, as you mentioned, uh, you had to fight back going into the third. Uh, what was the emphasis uh, trying to get back in the game? Well, you know, we did need to come back. I, I think it all started with a, a shift by uh, Corey Kane's line, where, you know, and you'll see here uh, shortly, and it really starts when we fall behind 4 2 in, in the third period, or in the second period, it, it, you, could, you could feel. You know, a, a little bit of panic maybe setting in. And Garrett Thompson gets us one right here, but that's foul. That that was after a shift by Corey Kane's line, which was fabulous. And then here, Andy Huff ties the game at four, and and you can see now we're we're back, we're on track. There's a sense of urgency, not a sense of panic, but there's a sense of urgency to our game. I thought the third period, for the most part, we carried the play. We had the better scoring chances, uh, and and. Uh, Here's the game winner in overtime, or maybe, no, this, yeah, the game winner in overtime, great play, good face-off win by Corey Kane, and a good finish by Gerald Mayhew. And, you know, Corey Kane, which I know is showing up on the, uh, going to be on the show here after me, he, he was uh, ill all week with the flu, the intestinal flu, and he was down. And to get the mileage we got out of him into an overtime game is, is miraculous. He played great, and he played unbelievably well. Him, Huff, and Mayhew have played uh, exceptional the past six weeks. And, uh, you know, it was just really impressive to see the performance of, the, of that line and, and Corey Kane particularly knowing how ill he was. Gerald Mayhew with the game winner, second goal of the game for him. He had a strong weekend named to the All-Tournament team. Yeah, he did. He scored three goals on the weekend. And, you know, it's a bit surprising maybe the fans that, that aren't really familiar with our team, but the, to the players and coaches, we see it. His confidence has grown the entire second half of this year. And what we've been watching is uh, Gerald hitting an awful lot of goal posts. Uh, you know, I can't tell you the number of goal posts he's hit lately where the puck hasn't gone in. I was hoping it would happen for him this year. Uh, certainly, I would expect big things from him next year, but I, it seems like he's 
He's got the confidence now. That line's humming. It's as good a line as you're going to see in college hockey. And it's good to see Gerald show up on the score sheet. And, and I think he would be the first to tell you it's a byproduct of a lot of work by uh, Corey Kane and Andy Huff. Come back on Saturday night, the WCHA championship game, uh, a berth in the tournament on the line. Uh, certainly the Bulldogs knew they were going to be in the tournament. Uh, Minnesota State may be playing for, for their uh, playoff fate. And uh, certainly a, a great game again on Saturday. I, I do think both teams, I know for sure we were in regardless. It was uh, we had, it, the only questions we had going in regarding the NCAA tournament were whether we were going to be a one or a two seed. We ended up uh, uh, the, the high two seed or number five seed overall. Um, I think Minnesota State was in regardless, just because if they had gotten beat this night, they were getting beat by us, which has a, a very good record. It wouldn't have hurt them very much, and, and they, you know, they would have been probably 12 going into the NCAA tournament. But what, what I want to say is both teams didn't care. We, we both wanted to win the Broadmoor uh, Trophy. It would have, you know, for us it would have been a big deal. And, and we lose this uh, game, and, and uh, I, I thought we played a better game on, on Saturday night than we did Friday. I thought we were on top of our game. It was just two really good teams going at the two, really the two best teams in the WCHA this season. And it was a hard-fought game. I think we play them again uh, next time. I'd still call it a 50-50 game. I think the two teams are that evenly matched, and this is just a night where pucks went in for them and they didn't go in for us. They got off to a good start, two goals in the first period, but uh, your team again fights back in the second period. You get a goal to, to trim it back to one uh, in the second period, strong second period for the Bulldogs. Yep, and uh, once again, broken record, but it's Corey Kane's line. Uh, I guess Gerald may, may use their goal the, uh, of the weekend, but it's, it's that line, and we've been feeding off that line. And I think just going forward, one of the things, and, and obviously we're still getting good play. You can see here Garrett Thompson and Buzio, you know, they're, they're deep in the other team zone, but... Um, we're going to need to make sure we've got all players humming uh, going into the NCAA tournament, though. We've been a team that's lived off of uh, a lot of different heroes throughout the season, um, but the, the strength of our team is the entire team, and uh, that's what we're going to be preaching this week uh, you know, when we get back to practice on Tuesday, that uh, this is not a time when we, we need someone dipping. This is when it's all hands on deck, and we're going to expect contributions, and we'll need contributions from every player uh, on the roster. You head this week to Cincinnati, Ohio, Midwest Regional, and uh, facing a team that, uh, ironically, you've faced three times already this year in Colgate. Yep, we have. We faced them. Uh, they have a winning record against us, 2-1. and one. Um, We beat them the opening game of the year, 7-4. The next night, they beat us 1-0, and then I, I believe it was 3-0 in, in uh, the Mariucci tournament. That game was a very close game. We didn't have Scott Zarnowski, so... Um, you know, going forward, we're confident that uh, you know we have a, a legitimate chance of, of hopefully getting beyond the first round and deep into the NCAA tournament. Um, but it'll be an evenly matched uh, two teams that are very, very good. And uh, you know, uh, I think our regional, the other game in our region, is going to be uh, Wisconsin versus North Dakota. Two very good teams. Um, I thought when I first saw the the bracket, wow, you know, it's a tough region. But then I looked at the other three regions said, you know what, they're all tough, you know, and they're all 16 teams out of the 60 that started the year, the 16 that are, that are surviving, they're, they're here for a reason, they're good teams, and, and certainly we're one of them. Certainly, uh, two years ago, plenty of experience in the NCAA tournament. How does that experience uh, from the last time help, help this time around? Well, I think it will translate. I think it's already translated into our season that we've had. Uh, I like what our seniors do. I like what they represent. When they come to the locker room, it's all business. Um, I think you can even see in our play last week uh, when we fell behind 4-2 to Anchorage. As I said, there was a sense of urgency to our team, but there wasn't a sense of panic. And I think that that's a trait that the 2011-12 uh, team had. And it's a, a trait that uh, our seniors are now passing on to the other kids. So it, it helps to have the experience, but more importantly, it's, it's going to help, you know, uh, in terms of uh, hopefully we do have a deep run. That's our goal. And inevitably, there's going to be some pitfalls along the way, and, and hopefully we'll be able to weather the storm just due to our experience. Coach, I know uh, plenty of logistics uh, to go over on the way to the NCAA tournament. It certainly uh, makes for a short but uh, busy week and exciting time uh, here for the Bulldogs. It, it does. It is a short week. And, uh, I, I, again, I thank you guys uh, in the athletic department for all the work you do. It, it makes... Uh, my job, uh, it melts it down to just coaching for the most part, and, and you guys handle a lot of the really difficult details, and we're all appreciative. Well, best of luck to the Bulldogs this week down in Cincinnati, Ohio. Thank you, Rob. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update right after this.